身。
May we all please stand. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, that same came unto him by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can be signs except that God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except one be born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except one be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou the teacher of Israel, and understandest not these things? Verily I say unto thee, We speak that which we know, and bear witness of that which we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no one hath ascended into heaven, but he that ascended unto him, but he that descended out of heaven, even the Son of Man, who is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Ezekiel adds to the conversation and moment, and thou son of man, say unto the house of Israel, that ye speak, saying, our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we are pined away in them. How then can we live? Say unto them that as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in death of the wicked, but the wicked turn away from his life, and turn ye unto the evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? We come now to celebrate the life, the love, and the legacy of our dear brother, Brother Michael Brunson. We will now have our military salute and our military orders just before we begin our hymn of praise.
Amen. Now join in with our choir for our hymn of praise as we prepare to continue to remember and reflect upon the life of our very dear brother, Brother Michael Brunson. Let's join in with our choir as we do our best to lift this family up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other reaches to me, Jesus. You are my strength, God. Strength like no other, strength like no other, it reaches me, Lord, said you are my strength, strength like no other, your strength like no other. Reaches to me. Can y'all help me say you are? You are my strength. Yes, God. Strength like. Strength like no other. You give me strength like no strength other. Like no other. Said it
like this. First, giving honor and our praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, Pastor Thompson, to the bereaved, to each and every one of the ministers, to the bereaved family. You have my, we will continue to keep you in prayer. We love you. Praise the Lord. The family has requests for the Old Testament reading, the 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The living word of God for all the people. Good morning. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. I'm going to be reading John the 14th chapter verses one through six. And the word of God reads, let not your hearts be troubled Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and make you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus said to Thomas and all the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except through me. The word of God for all God's people. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise the 
Praise the Lord, everybody. To the family, I offer you my deepest sorrow and condolences. And I pray that the happy memories will outweigh all the sadness in your heart today. And just remember, the word of God says that he'll never leave nor forsake you. So hold on to those words in trying times. Now let us pray. Dear Lord, in time of trouble and distress, we turn to you for strength. We know that we are not alone here today, Lord. Let this family know that we are with them. You are with them. And you remind us that you are our refuge and our fortress, our ever-present help in time of need. Yeah. Remember Psalms 23 and 4, which says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Father God. Thank you today for being with this family. I pray that your rod and your staff comfort them, Father God, today and every day. Help them, Father God, to be able to trust in you and to know that you're able to carry them through, Lord God. Let them know that your presence is always with them, surrounding and keeping them. Father God, continue to comfort this family as they mourn and heal the broken heart, God, and bring peace upon them. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that smiles upon him this day, Father God. Continue to hold him in your arms, God, that there may be rest, peace, and blessed assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much to the choir and to uh, Reverend Martin, Reverend Andrews, and Reverend Levy for sharing with us those words of love and appreciation. We now have a solo by Mr. Brandon Hillian, and then we will have our remarks uh, by those persons who have been identified by the family. And then we'll come back with Miss Anya Dixon, and she'll sing for us and with us as we prepare for our words of comfort. Let's receive uh, Brother Brandon at this time. Hallelujah, Saints. How y'all doing this morning? Want to give our honor and love to the Brunson family. Love y'all. We're here for y'all. had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days Nice. But when I, I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, somebody sing it with me, outweigh my bad days I, I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds they hang low I can hardly see the road I ask the question Lord why So much pain, but he knows what's best. 
cares for me although my weary eyes they can't see so I'll just say thank you Lord I I won't complain the Lord so good to me more than this whole world or you could ever be he's been so good to me I said he dried all my tears away turn my midnight into day so I'll, I'll say thank you Lord somebody sing it with me I say thank you Lord I've been right on but thank you Lord I've been told about but thank you, Lord. I've been misunderstood. But thank you, Lord. My body's weak. I said I'm weak and with pain. But thank you, Lord. Yeah. But I won't complain. Hallelujah. Ooh. I said he's been so good to me. been so good to me more than this whole world or you could ever be and I I won't complain love y'all love y'all Brandon, that was beautiful. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all so much for coming to celebrate the life of my beloved father, our father, Michael Roger Brunson Sr. To me, he was simply dad, and to our family, he was a protector, a provider, and a teacher of life's most valuable lessons. Our protector. I remember a time when Corey got in trouble at school and he said the coach spit on him. Corey said, hey, you spit on me. And the coach told him, you might want to save it for later. Corey came home and told my dad, and my dad was so angry. He immediately went up to the school and let the coach have it. Needless to say, that's probably the last time he ever did something crazy like that. I remember when my dad went and picked TJ up from work one time. And of course, TJ being TJ, was moving slow, as he always does. <laughs> my dad got out the car to go see what was going on with TJ, and when he did that, somebody stole the car. I remember that night, my dad slept on the couch with his gun on the table and dared somebody to enter our home. Michael was always the good kid, and for me, I stayed in trouble. But I remember when Brandon asked for my hand in marriage. My dad made him wait three months, y'all. <laughs> and I started to get impatient because I wanted to, you know, start wedding planning. He finally gave Brandon a yes, but he told him, regardless of my mouth, to always make sure that he takes care of me. My dad took a lot of pride in making sure his family was well taken care of on the outside. 
He took care of us and always made sure we had everything that we needed. But on the inside, he made us work hard for it. I remember begging him for a computer when I was younger. Um, he said, okay, but you gotta work for it. He didn't give us everything. Instead, he instilled in us strong work ethics. My brothers also know how to fight. Saturday mornings were spent wrestling with my dad while my mom was screaming, leave my babies alone. And for me, he would act, be aggravating me by combing my hair when he knew I hated it. My dad also taught us music. Music, music was one thing that he always loved. He loved loud, good music and cool cars. The six of us would be riding in town, around town in that gray sob that he had, cruising down the freeway, listening to Troop, Glenn Jones, Levert's, Casanova, just to name a few, and it was loud. Next thing I know, we're getting pulled over, um, getting a ticket, because my dad was speaking yet again and singing at the same time. My dad is the reason why I love 90s music so much. TJ is the DJ like my dad. Michael thought he was an R&B singer, and Corey can sing and rap anything from the 80s and the 90s. My dad's favorite CD was um, In God's Eyes by Reverend Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Choir. He's been listening to that same CD for over 30 years. My dad also loved to eat breakfast and good meals. My mom knew how to cook for him best. When she passed, I tried to fill those big shoes as best as I could. I did pretty good, but one thing I loved was my dad's honesty. He would send me the sweetest text messages telling me how good the food was. I would smile from ear to ear until recently I tried to make peach cobbler. I made peach cobbler for the first time. That wasn't a text message that I received from him, but more so a phone call. He told me it needed some work and I needed more spices and I needed to work on that one. So I will continue practicing new meals as he and my mother will guide me from above. Recently, my dad was telling me that he was going to move, and I kept telling him I didn't want him to move because I needed him close to me, and he kept saying, I'm going to get my, fix, my fence fixed, and I'm going to move. I said, well, Dad, where are you moving to? He insisted on moving to a new house. He also considered an apartment. He just wasn't sure, but he knew he wanted to move. Well, the, the last week, he was so happy because he finally got his fence fixed, and he said, Tish, I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm moving. He was so happy the way he lit, he lit up just talking about it. And so I said, but Dad, where are you moving to? Are you going to move into the apartment? I had finally accepted that maybe something small and cozy would be good for him. He responded to me so boldly. I'm not moving into an apartment, as if he never mentioned it. I'm moving into a nice house with a garage. I believe in my spirit, my dad was describing to me his mansion. He was so happy about it. God was with him, and he was with God. To my dad, I will miss our daily lunchtime phone calls, and you asking me, is, my nap, is it my nap time? I will miss you pulling up to my house to get a plate, and, get, and not getting out because of my dogs. I will miss going over to your house to check on you because you didn't answer the phone, only to find out it was your nap time. The enemy wants me to have a pity party, but God's word promises that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. People keep telling me that I'm so strong, but the truth is, it's my faith in God. First Thessalonians 4 and 13 says, so when we grieve, our grief is different because we know they are with the Lord, which is better by far. Philippians 1 and 23 says, we shall meet them again. We grieve, but it is not without hope. God prepared me for this season, and I'm fully equipped to battle it with the full armor of God. Amen. To my dad, our conversations were always so meaningful. My mother taught me love, and my dad taught me how to have true peace. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 11 through verse 12. Fathers encourage and comfort their children. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. 
Dad, thank you for everything that you did to be an amazing father and friend. Fly high, my angel, until we meet again. We love you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. To the pastor of this uh, great church, we'd like to thank you, sir. And to the family, we would like to thank you for giving the Director of Human Resources, where Mike worked, an opportunity to come up and say some words about Mike. Uh, my name is Harvey Shiver. Uh, I've known Mike since 2004, when he started. Um, I started a couple months right before Mike started. So I've known him for uh, quite some time now. Uh, when Mike became a member of, as I'm going to say, DHR, that's the short title, Mike um, was always about soldiering. He was always about taking care of soldiers. Mike was always called upon about the soldiers at Fort Jackson to help them with his, their promotion packages. And one of the most important things is that soldiers, even after they left Fort Jackson, they would still call Mike and wanted him to help them get their packet right so they can get promoted. Mike was about his business. If you knew Mike, um, as we all do, he was a quiet guy, but he was about his job and he was a professional. Um, one thing about Mike that I want to share with everybody is that um, Mike had a sister at work. Him and Miss Linda Mormon constantly argue, fuss, and fight. They were in the same office together for years. But the one thing about it, if you came in and you attacked Linda, Mike stood up like a big brother. If you came in and attacked Mike, Linda stood up like a big sister. But then they'd go right back at it again, argue, fussing, and fighting with each other. One thing also I need y'all to know, and you mentioned about food. Mike has a, and I'm sure the children know, he's tight with his money. <laughs> so when they ask for donations for food, Mike would normally give about $5. But then he wanted a breakdown to what his $5 was going to be for. <laughs> he wanted a, a line item list of what that $5 was going to be for. But at the end of the day, Mike would walk away with about $20 worth of food on his plate. <laughs> Mike will be well missed at our job. He was a, a good man. We often would talk about basketball, and we would often talk about getting back on the court and how he could dust me, he could beat me, he could, because he played here, he played there, he played there, and I said, all right, Mike, one day we're going to get back on that court. It may not happen here. It may happen in that other place, right? And I want to say this lastly, and this is confirmation. All week I was thinking about what I was going to say about Mike. And as I read through the program, it was there. As I listened to the songs, it was there. As I listened to the Bible verses that was read, it was there. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is from Psalms 23, particularly verses 4 and 6. And it reads, and if you don't mind if I reread that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Most of us, in our struggles, in our path as we walk through our valley, nobody knows, right? Nobody knows what we go through every day. We take that bag and we carry it. But with Mike being such a private person, he carried his bag, and some of that bag was known to us. You would think that wouldn't happen with a private person. 
Mike lost his son, his namesake. Mike had some health issues that he went through. And then Mike lost his beloved wife. And through all that, he still walked with his head up. Never to the left, never to the right. He walked down his valley, down his path. Because goodness and mercy came about for him. And now what is he doing? Resting in the house of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, when I think about Mr. Brunson's life and how I knew him, I remi I'm reminded of he embodied peace. Like the Bible says in Romans 12, 16, be at peace with one another. This was his way. He met every situation, every person with patience and understanding. God never makes mistakes. And he puts us just with the people he knows we need to be with so we can serve his purpose. Mama Gwen was a pure version of unconditional love. Her warmth and compassion was felt by everyone she encountered. But together, her and Mr. Brunson created a family that was a true reflection of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient and love is kind. So you had love and peace coming together, which created such an environment of happiness. When I was at his viewing yesterday, the room was filled with such peace, y'all. His presence. The calming presence was undeniable. And this was the essence of who he was as a man. It was filled with his peace, tranquility, and style, as you can see. I always told Tish, I said, man, your dad is the coolest, most loving person I've ever seen. Mr. Brunson gave himself fully to his family. He was a great dad, a great provider, and someone who never did anything halfway. As the Bible says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart. And that was the Mr. Brunson way. So to everyone in this room, to honor his legacy, I challenge all of us to strive to live as he did. Mind your own business. <laughs> Handle your business well. Love your families with your entire hearts. And always seek to be the best version of ourselves. So when you're in your cars today, turn your music up, put your hat on backwards, <laughs> and celebrate the remarkable life of Mr. Mike Brunson, a man of peace, a man of love, a man of honor. Tish, y'all had an amazing father and an outstanding mother and a phenomenal foundation. I pray everyone has peace and comfort with his memory today. Thank you. Lord, my steps in your word, dear Lord. In me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps. In your word, 
all of my sins in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Sing your anointing, Father, I pray. Hold my steps in your word. Please hold my steps in your word. Humbly I ask thee, teach me your will. While you're working, help me be still. Cause Satan is busy, God is real. Lord of my steps, your word. Please, Lord of my steps, in your word. Right on my tongue, let your words edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Take charge of my thoughts both day and night. Please order my steps in your word. Please order my in your word. Order my.
steps go Count in your way Come on, let's give God a great hand of praise for that wonderful, that wonderful song of prayer for all of us, asking God to lead and guide us in everything that we say and in everything that we do. Truly is an honor and a privilege for us all to be gathered together right around noon on this Good Friday as we celebrate the life and the legacy and the love of our dear brother, Brother Michael Brunson, on behalf of the family, we would like to say thank you to all of you who have come uh, to share your love throughout this week and last week. Uh, those of you who have stopped by, your cards, your cares, your concerns, we are so grateful for all of them. Uh, to this family for allowing our church, your church, your home church to be a part of this wonderful worship experience. We're so grateful uh, that God would give us the opportunity to minister to you in your time of need. Just have a few things to share with you guys as we think through this moment together, as we draw to the word of God to see where God would speak to us because in our lives, we know that God has the final say about everything. And we're so grateful and so thankful to all of you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these few moments that you've given us in time and eternity to reflect on the life of a father, of a friend, of a brother, of a mentor, of a mighty man of God. We thank you for these moments, God, and we pray now that we would draw strength from him and the ancestors as we not only wrestle with the moment we are in, but as we look in the days ahead keeping our eyes focused on you because we understand you are the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we pray now, God, that we not just draw down strength, but we draw down the same wisdom you gave him that you would give to us. Teach us, God, how to mind our own business. Teach us, God, how to learn how to rock and serve and keep going no matter what comes our way. Teach us, God, his patience. Teach us, God, his love. Now, God, we pray that you would bless us with the word from on high so that we can wrestle through and see what it is that you would have for us to do with the moment that we have. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And it is so. And all God's people together would say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. 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 The psalmist comes to encourage us in Psalm 27 and 10 psalm 27 and 10 and again thank you for being with this family at this time psalm 27 and 10 says something very uh, carefully and clear to us with these words it says when my father and my mother forsake me then the lord will take me up when my father and my mother forsake me then the Lord will take me up for a few minutes if you would allow me to express a little pastoral privilege and have a conversation with Corey TJ and Tish a conversation with Corey TJ and Tish. Mothers and fathers have a responsibility of teaching us so many things as we are growing up. They teach us what real love is. They teach us how to tie our shoes. And they teach us how to get back up when we fall. 
Parents teach us how to love and how to forgive. And they also teach us how to deny and also how to hold some grudges. Our mother and our father showed us the value in life. And it shows us, they show us the things that have no value in life. As we watch them, they show us what to say and what not to say. And more importantly, they show us when to say it. Our parents teach us who to worship and how to worship. They also show us what to pay attention to and what we should ignore. Some parents teach us a skill that uh, will help us have a successful life and an even better marriage. And some parents teach us that marriage is not for us if we don't have the ability to love someone enough to make the best decision for them when they cannot make it for themselves. Some fathers teach their sons how to save and how to serve. And some mothers teach their daughters how to invest and how to persevere. Mothers and fathers teach us mostly all that we know about the world, how it works, and how we respond to it. And as we make our way through this thing called life. Even psychological understandings and research says that children who grow up in homes with mother and father have a better chance at life and success and even academic achievement. Now this comment does not disregard the home where a mama or a daddy alone or by themselves are making it do what it do. That's right. That's right. But it does help us to see that mothers and fathers play a vital role in the lives of their children. Parents, beloved, are necessary. Mama and daddies are needed. They have a significant part to play in this thing called life. And they are the child's first teacher about the things of God and the things of reality. But what seems contextual for this present moment is the place and day that mothers and fathers are no longer there. What seems appropriate as a lens to deal with the loss of not one, but two of the most vital and necessary persons in a child's life. Hmm. Is this words written by David, the emerging king of Israel, containing a brief saying that says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Tish, the scholar suggests that David is in exile and he's running from King Saul. This 24-year-old anointed for the next of God in his life, he is a gifted musician and is being hunted because the next of God in your life will always bring out the evil intent of jealous people. He is in exile, he is banned and have been forced away from his place of safety and far away from home. And when he gets a few seconds to think about where he is and what he's going through, he opens his mouth and says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is a young man, y'all, who left from home and went off to serve king and country. But when things go bad out there, he stood up in, in a long place and said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He says, when the wicked and evil doers come my way and though the army encamped against me, my heart will not fear. For one thing I've learned by being on the Lord's side is that in the time of trouble, that he shall hide me. David is doing what any person his age might do when things go crazy. And if you are not careful, exile will convince you that there is nothing left 
or exile can convince you that there is another way. There seems to be some light at the end of this tunnel, Tish, TJ, Corey, but David takes another plunge and says, even when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now let's be clear with the text, since we all are learned folk, let's be clear. After doing some careful study of this word uh, in the life of David, there is no literal record of his David's parents ever walking away from him. Nor there is no record of David's parents ever forsaking him. But as he grew up and is having grown up conversations in a cave, he recognizes that there will come a point in life where he understood that mama and daddy will not always be there for you. But when they can no longer be there and do what they are assigned to do as parents, the Bible says God will take us up. Now, I'm going to give you a few minutes to jump on this train with me, but we about to holler in just a few seconds. See, there is no record of David's parents ever leaving him. But at some point in his life, he felt like an orphaned or neglected child and away from those who were assigned to care for him and nurture him and decided to write for our edification. I know what you feel, but what I have found in my life is even when you feel left out, God has a way of taking you up. Mm. See, there is no record, beloved, of David being left by his parents. But at some point in his life, he felt that he did not have the love and support that other children had. He felt that he didn't have the positive and reinforcing words that should come from his father. They were not there and the gentle touch and concern of his mother were not shared. And he decided to write you and me on April the 12th, 2024. And he says, when your mama and your daddy can't do it for you, turn your ear towards heaven and you will see that God himself will become a father for the fatherless and a mother for the motherless for when mother and father forsake you God will take you up David says when my mother and my father forsake me and there is no record now there is no record there is no written text that said David's daddy Jesse and his mama who is unnamed leave him or do something to harm him there is no record there is no record but forsake in the Bible is more than just walked away or left forsake means to leave one entirely and usually in a moment of need my God David is saying these people didn't just leave. They left when I needed them the most. David is saying there are going to be some times in your life, brothers and sisters, where people will walk out on you, not when you need them, but when you need them the most. I know you don't have that many situations in your life at this moment, but there will be some days where the people you thought you can count on will not show up. There will be some days where the people you invested in will not be able to invest in you. There will be some days where people who you took a plate of chicken to won't have two nickels to rub together and help you when you are hungry and cannot feed yourself but one thing we learn in this text is that when people can't do what we think they ought to be able to do don't you know God will send a bird right by Popeye send it to your house bring it to your address and he'll supply y'all not talking back to me don't you know God will send a text message from somebody you ain't talked to in three or four years and they'll say, you know what? I don't know what you're going through, but I know God is right there beside you. I know we take it for granted sometimes because we think everybody ought to be there for us all the time. But baby, it's a joy to have somebody think about you. It's a joy to have somebody encourage you. You don't deserve encouragement, but when God places you on somebody's mind and they got enough courage to say, I was thinking about you. I want you to keep on going. I want you to keep on pressing. I want you to keep Keep on serving. I want you to keep on giving. That ain't coming from somebody who don't have God in their life. That is God himself showing up in your DMs to bless you and not hurt you. Mm. David said, when I had no idea what to do, they left. When I needed a shoulder to cry on, they left. When I had a decision that was bigger than me, 
they left. I'm not just whining about being alone, David says. I'm trying to tell you that when I needed these folk the most, they were not there. And even though there is no record, David said, in your life, people will not leave. And not just when the timing is perfect, they will leave when you need them most and you are at your lowest. But don't you worry. If you made it in this room today to hear this message, I just want you to know that when they go, God comes to take you up. See, the God we serve, I don't know if you know who I'm talking about, but the God we serve will step in and be the guide and the voice of calm and the voice of reason and the voice of authority. God will show up and he will show you what steps to take and he'll show you what moves to make. God will show up. He, my God, we may not want to believe it, but everybody in your life one day will have to walk away from you. But can I just go ahead and tell you when they walk away, don't you know God will take you up I'm not trying to get you stirred up I'm not trying to start no fire but you ought to look over at least one person in your life and just give them a little eye because all of us are going to leave one day it might not be today but we're going to leave here one day and when that person who we counted on leaves us God said don't you worry baby I got you covered every step of the way God says don't you worry I'm going to step right in and I'm going to hook you up and I'm going to fill in the spot that they left in your life don't you worry see if you don't have God in your life you ain't know what I'm talking about but if you know that God is real and that God will get you out of some stuff that you got your y'all not talking back y'all faking with me up in here God will get you out of some stuff that you got yourself in I'm not talking about the lies they told on you I'm talking about the truth you said was a lie come on up in here I'm talking about the real deal stuff that you know you got in seeking deep in saying and one day God came by and he dropped the charges on your whole life and you ought to take about five seconds and give him some praise because not because of the lie but thank God because of the truth and you still got by hold on come on see 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 when they go tish this is what it says i know it feel like it's kind of harsh i was a little concerned but i was like okay god how we deal with this he said thompson listen didn't you just hear the long lady say to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord but don't you also know it's when they go away i step in and i make a way for them like no other don't you know when they walk away i'm right there leading and guiding them watch what he says god will hold you together god will step in God will make a way God will become your teacher God will become your guide God will become your buckler and your shield God will be your supply God will wipe every one of your tears from your eyes but he promised you that he would never ever leave you alone Corey, Tish and TJ he is not mama but he is the breasted one he is not daddy but he is the originator of your family line he he is not mama but he is tender and compassionate uh, he is not father but he can determine your life with his very words he is not mama but he still is caring and comforting he is not daddy but in his hands you will surely reach your final destination he is not mama but he will answer your every call he is not father but he can teach you how to catch and like big mike he'll teach you how to fight he is not mama who prays over you all night long but he's said if you just cry out to me I'll supply all your need according to my riches and glory he says mama and daddy might have to leave you but if mama and daddy step off the scene God says I'll take you up isn't that strange that David says God will take you up that's what he says so I had to ask a little question of the text and we about to go on to the house I said God take him up but up where he said David is thinking about a time where David is out there and a the sheep is in trouble uh, and the sheep was in a vulnerable place uh, he says and the sheep may have just been attacked or the sheep might have been just left for dead and when the shepherd comes he all the shepherd comes to recover his sheep uh, and the only way the shepherd can recover a wounded sheep is not by just patting him on the back the shepherd has to pick them up uh, and put them on his back uh, and bring him back into the fold and nurture them until they can get back on their feet uh, and that's what God wants us to know that when you get in trouble I'm not just going to come and get you out of trouble uh, but I'm going to pick you up and carry you back to the place of safety uh, Tish 
Corey and TJ a few years ago Gwen heard that call uh, she was in a situation that only God could get her out of uh, and guess what God did uh, he reached down from heaven uh, he picked her up and put him on his back uh, and he carried her to a place of safety uh, and a few days ago about the first of the month Michael got that same call uh, he was in a situation that he could not get himself out of uh, and I can imagine wherever he was at at that moment he just cried out unto the Lord Jesus Christ and the shepherd that we serve the shepherd that we praise the shepherd that we read about uh, he reached down and picked up old Mike uh, threw him on his back and brought him to his safe place uh, oh my God uh, and you say where did they take him if you're going to take him up uh, he says I took them up uh, he says up where up where the wicked will cease from troubling uh, and the weary are going to be at rest uh, up where up where there is no more crying uh, there is no more doctor visits uh, there is no no liars uh, there is no more cheaters uh, you say I'm going to take you up up where uh, he says up where the walls are jasper uh, and the streets are paved with gold uh, he says up where uh, he says up where every day is Sunday uh, and Sabbath will have no end uh, when God came to take them up higher then we could see what he says uh, he says but don't you worry when I take them uh, it's just an opportunity for me to step in uh, and show you how big and bad I am I know it don't feel good I don't even know what it would be like uh, to have to lose two parents uh, but let me tell you something uh, God says when they go I step in and I make ways for you out of no way uh, I guess you miss your moment to shout uh, because if you do a little work on the Hebrew Corey uh, the work in the Hebrew for the word up uh, is also in oh, my God uh, I said the word in Hebrew for up uh, is also in uh, so if we go ahead and interpret like we know how to do uh, he says when our mother and our father can't do it God says don't you worry I'm going to take you in uh, oh there it is there it is uh, so that's what I want you to know while I'm on my way uh, don't you worry about being out there by yourself uh, he says I got you covered I'm going to take you in uh, and he's talking to somebody uh, who is a child without parents uh, and you're like why you say take in uh, he says I'm going to take you in uh, and I'm going to give you the family that you'll need for where else you gotta go huh? you didn't hear what I just said uh, he says they've taken you as far as they can take you uh, but if you throw your hands up and come unto me he says I'll give you new people uh, that are coming to your life uh, I'll give you new mothers uh, I'll give you new fathers uh, I'll give you new sisters uh, and I'll give you new brothers uh, and they can take you to the rest of where you have to go uh, I just want to encourage the three of you as I go on to my seat uh, that God has a future for you but let me tell you about the God we serve he'll be a mother for the motherless he'll be a father for the fatherless he'll step in every time and give you what you need to make it to where you have to go oh you didn't hear what I just said I said don't you worry about who you're gonna call don't you worry about who gonna answer the phone at midnight hour don't you worry about who gonna chastise you or straighten you up when you need to be straightened up he says I'll give you everything you need uh, according to my riches and glory uh, and what you'll learn about being in God uh, is everything you need ain't stuff uh, sometimes God will give you somebody uh, who will help lift you to where you got to go uh, if you do me a quick favor look at your neighbor and say I might need you I might I might need you I might I might need you I, I, I might need you you you're gonna need somebody one day I know Vicky tell us as long as I got King Jesus I don't need nobody else uh, but we don't believe that up in here huh? because guess what huh? if the trustees weren't here the lights wouldn't be on huh? if the ushers weren't here the fans wouldn't be passed out huh? if the musicians weren't here there wouldn't be no singing huh? if the choir wasn't here nobody can lift a song huh? if y'all weren't here we wouldn't be having a service huh? and if I wasn't here somebody else would have to preach huh? so we gonna need somebody and that's what God is trying to tell us huh? don't be out here trying to live this life by yourself huh? he says I already planted somebody right around you that's going to fill the space that I need you to have in your life so that's what I want to encourage you about as I go he said don't you worry when mom and daddy can't do it he says I'll do it I'll make it happen I'll put your name in the right places I'll put your promotion on the right desk I'll give you favor that you didn't even deserve he says don't you worry about it I'll do it because when they go out I'll take you in 
I had a friend who lost a very dear, very, very, very dear, very dear, lost his, his dearest mother. Lost his dearest mother. Come on, Twan, let's go. He lost his dearest mother. And it was hard for me to say it, but I just kept hearing God say, yo, you might have lost your natural mother. But don't you see all them senior season saints at the church around you? And I didn't know how to say it, Tish, because I was like, man, God, that's kind of rough. That's that man, daddy. And, you know, he crazy about his mama. That's he crazy about his mama. I can't say that to him. He say, but you have to let people know that before your natural parents leave, when you're in the body of Christ, I've already signed somebody in the community of faith to look out for you. I've already assigned somebody. I know it's kind of hard to hear. But I was thinking about it and I said, bruh, you might have lost natural mama. That's right. And that gonna hurt. Yeah. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Yeah. Natural daddy, it's gonna hurt. that's gonna hurt. Oh, but God says, I'll never ask you for one without giving you another. Amen. Amen. I'll never take Amen. one from you Amen. without replacing it yeah. with something that you'll need yes. for the rest of your journey. And this is what I'm asking us to do. When God takes us through situations like these, we must recognize what we lost. But we also need to pay attention to who we have left. Yes. Somebody going to have to step up to the plate. Because Tish is still struggling on these recipes. Somebody... Somebody gonna have to step up to the plate. Cause TJ is still smooth and paceful. He ain't going nowhere fast. So somebody gonna have to step up and be there for Corey. And say, Corey, you're the patriarch now. You're the oldest and you gotta look out for the rest of us. Somebody got to step up. See, sometimes we let death take from us, but we don't know how to let death give to us. Amen. Amen. We have to step up to the next place, and God has placed people in our lives just to remind you that I promise I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And sometimes God's way of doing that is by giving y'all somebody else. It's okay to be pie in the sky. Oh, I just went into a trance and the Lord spoke to me. But you need somebody on this earth who's in a relationship with God that you can call and say, listen, I need some wisdom. I need some guidance. I need some understanding. God has already prepared what you need because he promised he'll never leave you alone Amen. so david just simply gives it to us when we go through situations like this don't you worry when mom and daddy can't do it god says i'll take you up and when he says i'll take you up it ain't just up he says i'll take you in he got your back he's gonna cover you and it's people that he'll use to walk with you through this day a lot of times we don't want to deal with people, but guess what? You're going to need somebody. And when God gives you somebody, ain't no strings attached. They love you unconditionally. They don't want your money. They don't want no clothes out the closet. They don't want no shoes. They don't want no cars. They just want to come and love you all and be that place and help you from earth to glory. Do you receive the word of the Lord God today? Amen. Just receive it. That's all I have. Amen. Somebody's looking out for you. Yes. And I promise you it won't be long Amen. before you recognize it. Amen. If you're in this room and you've been trying to do this thing called life, number one, without God, and number two, without the people that God has placed in your life. Now, be clear. 
there's some people in your life that God ain't put there. But that's your fault. You chose them. Amen. But there are some people that God has placed in your life. They don't want nothing. They just want to love you and help you. Those are the people that God is sending. But if you have that thing between you and God that you just won't let go. I can't trust you, God. I, I can't take these people, God. I, I don't have the patience to wait on you, God. I don't, I don't even like church. I don't like this. I don't like that. If you have those things in between you and God that's blocking you from receiving from him, this invitation is an opportunity. This moment is a day for you to kind of swat out all them blocks. Get rid of all that stuff that's stopping you from walking into all that God has for you. I promise you, I've peeked over into your future. You have so much more in store. If there are things blocking your way, just take a spiritual moment and just move them out the way. Put that doubt aside. Put that hurt aside. Put that lack of trust aside and put your hand in God's hands. And I promise you, he will never, ever leave you all alone. He'll be there when everything falls out the bottom and he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. Will you just trust him and believe in him? If we would close our eyes just for a second, I don't want anybody feeling intimidated or feeling any kind of way I want you to see if you got your business fixed with the Lord I want you to see if you've got some blockers and blinders that's stopping you from trusting him I want you to see if you've placed more trust in your horses and your chariots versus the trust you need to put in God I want you to see if you've put too much confidence in humanity more than you've placed in God. If you've done any of those things, would you please just reorder those things in your life? Turn some things upside down. Switch some things around. God didn't say that you would not have competing interests. He just asked that you not let them compete with him because he's controlling your life. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's ordered this day. He has called us to this moment to give us an opportunity to come into divine relationship with him. If you're in this room and you want to come into divine relationship with him, as quiet as you are, as humble as you are, would you just give your life to him? Say, God, I give my life to you. I trust you again. I believe you again. I want to walk with you again. God don't let me be by myself while life is down here lifing. If you're in this room and you are willing to make that move, go ahead, make it towards him. I'm not making you come down and making a bold expression, but just give your life to Christ because without him, we can never survive any of these things. Please receive him today as Lord and Savior, for he promised he'll never leave you, never leave you alone. So Father, we come before you because we trust you. Not because we know what it's gonna be, but we believe that you're gonna work all things out for our good. We come to you, God, because this is your house. And you said if we prayed and asked, we should receive. So God, I pray that you would comfort the family like never before. I pray that you would wipe all tears from their eyes. I pray that you would remove all doubts, calm all fears. God, I pray that you would help them to nudge away all blockages. I pray, God, that you would help them nudge away all doubt and mistrust. And even if there's some unforgiveness, God, I pray that you would give them strength to walk over the unforgiveness and come into a divine place with you. Father, you said the land that you have for us is a land that's flowing with milk and honey. 
a land that's filled with peace and understanding. And that's not just in heaven, but God, you want us to walk in peace right down here on earth. You have some divine relationships for us, God, that we still have yet to access. So God, give us the wisdom, give us the mind, give us the understanding. Give us some of that Mike Brunson spirit, God, that allows us to press our way even when we don't understand everything that's going on. Keep us now in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on you. And God will be careful to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And it is so. And all God's children together said amen. 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 And amen. Can amen. we celebrate the life of Mr. Michael R. Brunson Sr. as if as he lived it? Come on, let's celebrate the gift of God. The gift of God from him. The gift of God in him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Our team is coming now to lead us in our next few expressions of the service. We ask that you would please take some time and hang over with us and fellowship for a little while if you're not in a rush to get back to work uh, or the rest of your day if you would please spend some time of fellowship with this family amen i do believe it is the, tra the traditional black church meal amen fried chicken rice amen green beans amen we as a black church and we don't apologize amen probably a little piece of cake and some sweet tea amen Please fellowship with these parents because with this family simply because we can't keep making these moments pie in the sky. We can't keep making these moments. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Don't see me later. Mm -hmm. Spend time with me now because these are the times when I not just need God, but these are the times that I need you. Yes. Let's show some love to this family. Amen. Let's do our committal. Would you all please stand? Oh. Do it. Thank you, guys. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take from the walks of this life the soul of our deceased father, brother, and friend, we do now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Always knowing that what we commit to the ground is just a shell, but his life is everlasting, and he lives on in each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you be seated just for a moment? On behalf of the Bostick and Thompson Funeral Home, we would like to present this plaque to the family for the life of your loved one. And it reads this outline. As we mourn our dearly departed with mixed emotions and broken hearted, we are never prepared to say goodbye. And the ultimate question is always why? We question the wisdom of God's ways and thirsts for answers in coming days. Somehow we seek to understand why life is forfeited upon demand. An eternal flame will light the way as you embrace his memories each and every day. Your service, your pass to earthly tests, God granted to you eternal rest. Rest in peace is the fervent vow of this earth he leaves now. We offer this prayer, O Lord above, in loving memories of those we love. When sincere sympathy, the Bostick and Tompkins Funeral Home, Mr. Nick Shell is our director. Friends and family remember, God loves us and he cares. And he's not gonna put no more on us than we can bear. As you receive our blessing and our benediction. Amen. If you don't mind, just kind of using your elbow to kind of nudge your neighbor real quick. Just nudge him, say, I got your back, I got your back, I got your back, I got your back. 
Don't say it too hard because I don't want you to lie. Amen. <laughs> and got your back. Family, we are in this together. And God is teaching us that we must value each other now more than ever before. Let's love. Let's embrace. Let's remember. Let's sacrifice one for another. Because you have no idea how your presence is just like the very presence of God. He'll never leave us alone. So, Father, we thank you now, not just for this moment, but for the life of the person who's beside us. We thank you for the gift of family and friendship. We thank you for the gift of reflection and celebration. Thank you now for Michael R. Brunson Sr., for he has called us all together just so that we could be with one another one more time. Now, God, we pray that you would bless our food, our fun, and our fellowship. I don't know what R&B songs are on the playlist, but God, when they leave the church, amen. Let them pump it up, amen. <laughs> I bless you now. I thank you for being our God, and I thank you for loving us beyond ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy, be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, and it is so. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Come on, Reverend Clergy. Amen. Know where I'm going, where I'm going, oh, soon. If God gives me grace, I'll run this race until I see my Savior. Face to face Oh, I'm going up yonder Going up yonder Going up yonder To be with my Lord 